The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms, and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. Today's lesson includes nine characters, six of which contain a halberd. A halberd is a combination spear plus battle axe, which appears in the composition of several important Chinese characters. The first character is the halberd itself, composed of a long shaft with a front blade for slashing, a rear axe head for crushing skulls, and a sharp little hook to eviscerate your component on the back swing. An extra trope was added to emphasize the sharpness of the blade. This impressive tool is pronounced first tone. Guh. Guh. Our next pictogram can depict either a spear, a shield, or a pestle, depending on the character in which it appears. This three-stroke character is pronounced first tone. Gan. Gan. When gan represents a shield or a spear, it conveys the idea of attacking and injuring an opponent, at the same time protecting oneself, while the pestle interpretation means to destroy something or possibly offend someone. A pestle, or pestle, by the way, is a heavy round-ended stone used for crushing and grinding things to powder, usually in a bowl. When these two characters are put together as gan ge, they make up the expression for warfare, armed conflict, literally attack and defend. These two pictographic elements often appear in the composition of other characters, either as a clue to the meaning or to the pronunciation. So knowing them is helpful when learning to read and write Chinese. The third character in today's lesson is our familiar hand radical coupled with the halberd. Only this time the halberd represents not a weapon, but the long, sickle-shaped pole used in punting or rowing a boat, something a gondolier might use. Like the halberd, this pole has a hook on one end to grab onto the dock or to pull the boat along the waterway. This character, pronounced third tone, jaw, jaw, has nothing to do with boats in modern Chinese. Instead, it's likening the side-to-side -side sway of the boat to the back-and-forth movement of our eyes when searching for something. This character means to seek, search, or look for. When used during cash transactions, it means to look for and make change for the customer. G, believe it or not, is the phonetic, colored purple. Just as in English, a hard G sound, G, can change to a soft G sound, G, depending on the context. Our first example is simply, Zhao Chu, to find out, such as the reason for a plan's failure or success. When a person comes to the office looking for you, I would naturally call out, You're in Johnny. There is someone who wants to see you. Or even, You have a visitor. I mentioned that this character is used when making change. For example, Johnny, Samba Yuan. And here's $300 change. Literally, I found for you the difference of $300. The fourth character in today's lesson is the most common word in nearly every language, the first person singular, I or me. Pronounced third tone, wo, wo. 
Remember that Chinese makes no distinction between subject and object, so its position within the sentence determines everything. Originally, this was a pictogram for a type of weapon with a saw-like blade, perfect for lopping off an arm or two of your enemy, or maybe decapitating a criminal. In any case, this character lost its original meaning of to kill or to maim, and now only means first person singular. First person plural, of course, is woman. Be careful not to confuse these last two characters, zhao and wo, which have only minor differences in the way they're written. Wo jia means my family, and ta shi wo tai tai translates as she's my wife. Notice that family and close relationship words often drop the particle. De, that shows possession. Wo de jia and ta shi wo de tai tai are also perfectly correct. Wo de tian is the usual way Chinese people say, "Oh my gosh," or "Oh my god." I always remind my English students not to get in the habit of exclaiming "Oh my god," because religious references still offend people. Especially coming from the mouths of non-natives, Tian in Chinese has no specific religious connotation and is thus innocuous. Chinese people are not particularly religious anyway; they're more along the lines of what Westerners call superstitious, with the gods, spirits, and unseen forces lurking everywhere that need to be appeased for whatever reason. As I mentioned, the plural of war. Is woman, as in this example. Woman, he does go to find him. We'll go find him first thing in the morning. And if you hear that someone is looking for you, the appropriate question would be. Ni, shi bu shi zai zhao wo. Did you want to see me, or were you looking for me? Before introducing the next character in today's lesson, we need to review some of what we learned in lesson six. From their earliest history, the Chinese have used ten as the basis of counting, presumably because humans have ten fingers. A single horizontal stroke represented the beginning number one. And a single vertical stroke represented the final number, ten. Ten indicating completion. Number ten eventually developed into the combined cross shape that it has today. The expression "shi zu," meaning extremely or fully, is an example of this idea of completion, which also enters into the composition of our next character. This new character. Is composed of a halberd plus either a single vertical stroke, meaning completion, or a little square, indicating an enemy village or tribe. Either version depicts the same outcome: the enemy has been subdued and the conflict has ended. In other words, it now means to end or complete, to become, to achieve one's goal. The character is pronounced second tone, cheng. Cheng, the purple component, as always, is a clue to the pronunciation, which I'll introduce in a moment. Since the earliest version of cheng consisted of a vertical stroke indicating completion, or the number ten, it's not at all surprising that cheng also refers to ten parts of a whole or tenths. So our first example shows this. San cheng means three tenths or thirty percent. Any number from one to nine can be used in this expression, with either er cheng or liang cheng accepted for twenty percent. Since cheng means to become or completely, cheng ren would mean an adult or person of legal age. The expression in lesson one, da ren, more typically applies to generational difference or the seniority among relatives. A famous person is 名人. To be famous is 
you ming. And to achieve fame is cheng ming. Older people will often ask a young man of marriageable age, Ni cheng jia la mei you? Are you married? Remember that mei you can always be shortened to mei. When combined with wan from lesson 13, we have the most common expression for the verb, to accomplish, or to complete, wan cheng. This idea of whole or complete can also be used with some time expressions to emphasize the length, as in this example. Pa cheng tian zai wai. He or she is away from home all day long. Following is a possible sense progression to help in remembering the character cheng. By overcoming one's enemy, hostilities end and victory is achieved. The enemy accepts his fate and swears allegiance to the new rulers. All is settled as the former enemy now becomes a vassal state, paying a fixed tribute to the king, a tenth of all taxes collected in the newly added territory. As we have seen, cheng is a phonosemantic compound with zheng, the phonetic element. First tone, zheng, started out as a black dot or square to indicate a nail or a tack, with several variations over the centuries, depending on the angle from which it's viewed. It's also a split sound character, usually pronounced first tone, ding, or more rarely, zheng. The meaning of nail or tack has been delegated to another character incorporating a metal component, so ding is now reserved for its shape. It's shaped like a T in the Latin alphabet, or a square as it appears in its ancient form. A T square, or a T shaped road junction, would include ding zi in the description. Rou ding would refer to any meat, such as beef, pork, or chicken, cut into small chunks or cubes for stir-frying. Diced vegetables, also called ding, would probably then be added to the mix. More useful by far is the next character, composed of the hand radical from lesson two, with ding as both radical and phonetic. It's pronounced third tone, Da, da, and means to hit, pound, or beat, with lots of idiomatic uses. It's also a split sound character, with second tone, da, being used only to translate the English word dozen. For example, yi da rou bao zi, a dozen meat buns. There are many more ways to use third tone, da, such as da zi, to type on a keyboard, or da bao, to pack, or to tell a restaurant server you intend to take your food home. And of course, as every child screams while running to their mother, the classic, ta da wo le, he hit me, assuming the perpetrator is a boy. There are hundreds of idiomatic expressions with da, one of which is da kai, to open a door or window, turn on a light or electrical appliance. So, leave the door closed, would translate as man buyo da kai. Notice the topic, door, comes first for emphasis, meaning I prefer the door the way it is now, that is, shut. The next character in today's lesson depicts a fief or piece of land, represented by an underlined square, protected by an armed noble, represented by a halberd. It's pronounced fourth tone, huo, huo. The inhabitants of this feudal manor 
along with their possessions, were under the protection of the landlord. Those outside it had to fend for themselves. This gave rise to two distinct meanings. First, a feudal state, and second, those fortunate enough to be inside, in contrast to those outside. In other words, either or, perhaps, some, but not all, people or things. For example, 或你或他一定要去. Either you or she, one of you, must go. Actually, the first 或 in this sentence can be dropped. 你或他一定要去. 两或三本书, two or three books. In this example with consecutive numbers, 或 isn't even necessary. 一两本书, one or two books. 两三本书, two or three books. Otherwise, in short phrases without numbers, keep the double 或 pattern. For example, 或多或少, more or less, in varying degrees, to a greater or lesser extent. Our final character is an expanded, later version of huo, this time with a well-defined boundary, surrounding an expanded and clearly defined territory. Pronounce second tone, guo, guo. The entire character huo is now the phonetic, as the purple strokes indicate. This is the character for a nation or a country. As I've repeated many times, with its limited number of possible syllables, modern Chinese has far too many homonyms to be understood without actually seeing the characters. So the most common expression for a country in the spoken language is guojia, guojia. The king of Thailand is Tai Guo Guo Wang, and Chinese territory translates as Zhong Guo Guo Tu. A foreign country is Wai Guo, and a foreigner is Wai Guo Ren. So an easy sentence would be Wai Guo Ren Shao. There aren't many foreigners. If we want to say that a person has gone abroad, we can say, 他出国去了。他出国去了. And if someone's already traveling or living abroad, we can say, 他们在国外。他们在国外. Notice the word order. 外国 means foreign country, and 国外 simply means abroad, outside the country we're currently in. Here is our color chart with today's nine characters. 哥, 找, 成, 或, 干, 我, 国, 丁, and 打. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? 1. A combination spear plus battle axe, called a halberd, appears in many important Chinese characters. 2. A shield, or a pestle, depending on viewpoint, is a three-stroke character pronounced gan. The shield, combined with halberd, is one expression meaning warfare. Gan ge. 3. A halberd-like pole for punting a boat enters into the character jaw, likening the swaying of a boat to our eyes sweeping back and forth in search of something. Yorin jiao ni means someone is looking for you. This carrot can also be used to say someone is finding and making change. Ta jiao wo liang bai yuan. He gave me $200 change. For the most common word in most languages is I. Or me, and Chinese is no exception. 
as with the other subject and object components in Mandarin, I and me are the same. Luo. Originally meaning to maim or kill, this connotation fell into disuse thousands of years ago, and wo was repurposed as the first person pronoun. Five. All personal pronouns can drop the possessive particle the, especially in phrases denoting family relationships. Six. The character for sky or heaven, Tian, has no specific religious reference, so translating Wu de Tian as Oh my God is a bit too strong and possibly offensive, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, or what in the world, might be a closer approximation. Seven. The number ten was originally a single vertical stroke indicating finality or completion. It figures in the character Cheng, giving it the meaning to reach completion, achieve success, or become whatever. This vertical stroke later morphed into a square and was finally replaced by a nail as the phonetic. 8. The ancient ideograph for a nail or tack has two pronunciations, ding and zheng, and often becomes the phonetic component in other characters, cheng being one of them. 9. Perhaps the most common character with ding as phonetic is da, meaning to pound, beat, or hit. It enters into plenty of idiomatic expressions, such as da kai, meaning to open or turn on anything electric, and even serves as a translation of English dozen, albeit with a different tone. 10. The concept of a country or a nation is a rather late development in the minds of most humans, and so it is in Chinese, where the earliest pictogram for a protected area doesn't show strict borders. Huo originally referred to a fief with a feudal lord as its armed protector, and was later extended to emphasize a contrast between those within and those outside the walls, either or Perhaps, some, but not all. Only later was huo given clearly drawn boundaries to create the character for country, pronounced guo, with huo supplying both the meaning and the pronunciation clue. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far.
Thank you for watching and listening.